We are very interested uh, in the aging of mammals because human is mammal, uh, but also because the mammal, mammals represent excellent uh, experimental systems to study aging. So consider this, uh, mammals uh, uh, differ more than 100 fold in lifespan. If you compare short-lived and long, uh, like a shrew, which is short-lived, and whale, like a long-lived mammal, they differ more than 100 million fold in, in body mass. Uh, and if we uh, consider uh, how this changes uh, across uh, evolutionary tree branches of life, then it's very clear that nature has adjusted lifespan, you know, or adjusting lifespan all the time. Uh, when it's needed, lifespan is decreased, like for example in mice and rats. When it's needed, it may be increased, for example, like in humans. So this process is reversible. So what puzzled us is, uh, is the nature of this process, of, of, of how it can be naturally changed. This would be different uh, uh, in comparison with the experiments in, in the lab in which uh, genes are manipulated and animals may live long, but these animals will not be competitive in a natural setting. We are interested in the natural changes in lifespan, uh, which would still keep the species competitive. This area is not very well explored, and uh, it's really just in the beginning of, of, of analysis. And our approach to this has been to understand the genomics of long-lived organisms. Uh, the first organism we've been become, becoming interested is called naked mole rat. Uh, it's a small rodent which lives in Africa, um, in the area of Ethiopia, uh, it's underground in, in the subterranean niche, and uh, it's the size of a mouse, but lives about 10, 10 times longer, lives in about 30 years. It's quite remarkable how uh, it could be adapted to live that long, and, um, and of course it lives underground, it doesn't have enemies, the environment is quite stable and so on. But it has so many unique features, besides longevity, it doesn't feel certain types of pain, um, for example, if you drop an acid on the skin of that animal, it doesn't feel a pain. Uh, it doesn't control the body temperature. It's, uh, it's actually the only mammal known which goes with the ambient temperature. Um, so it's also one of the two known eusocial mammals. So they live in a colony with uh, one female called the queen uh, controlling the entire colony. That's the only reproducing female and there are also three or four males which can reproduce the other. Uh, animals in the colony are workers. They never kind of reach sexual maturity and, and they, they never reproduce. So those are quite remarkable features of the animal. But of course, for us, it's the most interesting longevity. So we, we became interested in this and decided to sequence a uh, genome. And uh, we had a collaboration, nice collaboration with several labs, uh, 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 Shirley Buffenstein in San Antonio, Thomas Park at the University of Illinois, and the genome was sequenced at BGI in China, and also it was nice collaboration with Eva Women's University in Korea, but we coordinated all this from here in, in the lab in Boston. So we sequenced the genome, analyzed it in various ways, uh, looking for genes which are positively selected, looking for genes which changed expression in comparison to the short-lived organisms, uh, looking for unique amino acids, looking for particular pseudogenes and, and other genes. And so uh, we have various hypotheses uh, with regard to uh, how lifespan is adapted in, in naked mole rat. So one interesting lead is a protein called UCP1. It's a mitochondrial protein which controls the flux of protons going back to the mitochondria. It's called uncoupling protein. And the protein involved in thermogenesis. It's quite remarkable that that particular protein uniquely changed the naked mole rat, and naked mole rat does not maintain stable body temperature. So, and of course, if uh, animals don't need to invest energy to, to, to produce heat, it's possible that they generate less damage, and this is one of the reasons they live longer. Some other interesting leads is uh, one protein called P16. It's the most disease-related gene uh, in mammals, and that protein is uniquely changed in naked mole rats, became shorter. So we don't know exactly how it affects the function of the protein. It's, this research is still being done in the lab, but it's quite remarkable that uh, this is a unique, unique change in the naked mole rat. So there are various other uh, features of the naked mole rat that we found. For example, two genes which are involved in telomere function, uh, uh, which, which is a process which is, uh, has been implicated in the control of lifespan and aging. 
uh, also uniquely changed in the naked mole rat. So this pro we still actively study the, pro uh, the, the animal uh, uh, and, and, and the genomics of the animal. And currently we are sequencing another genome of the mole rat, another uh, mole rat uh, called the Maryland mole rat, which is related to the naked mole rat, but it's uh, like a normal animal. So this will help us to really to define uh, uh, which features of the naked mole rat are linked to longevity and which features are linked to other unique traits of that remarkable animal. Another uh, uh, genome project that we have is on the, on the bat, called Brand's bat. Uh, this is another quite remarkable animal. Um, it's perhaps even more extreme than, naked, than the naked mole rat. So this animal weighs about 5 grams, uh, but it lives more than 40 years. And it also flies, which is a metabolically active process. So, so apparently nature was able to adjust something in that animal so that lives extremely long. So we just sequenced the genome uh, of that animal and uh, uh, again looked for various genomic s signatures, transcriptomic signatures and other characteristics uh, which would help us to understand the exceptional uh, lifespan of, of the, of the brain's bed. So one interesting feature we found is um, is the IGF-1 growth hormone axis. Growth hormone uh, and IGF-1 uh, IGF signaling is the, one of the best known processes that, that regulate lifespan in model organisms. So for example, when a growth hormone receptor is downregulated, many organisms live long. Uh, and uh, even within mammals, uh, uh, in mice, for example, the growth hormone receptor knockout mice, they, they are also quite long-lived. Interestingly, those growth hormone receptor knockout mice, they're also small. They're called dwarf mice. And, uh, and here, as we have another analogy with the brand's bed, because bats are also small. So p perhaps uh, they have this dwarfism-like phenotype in which they adjusted IGF-1 and growth hormone signaling, so they became smaller, but this also uh, made them long-lived. So we don't know the answer for this question, but it's still been an active area of research in my lab. We are interested in finding common features uh, um, of various uh, mammals. We think that some of the strategies in mammals, uh, strategies to extend lifespan, are common. So it seems that some of the strategies involve central metabolism. It seems that the, uh, the rate of metabolism decreases with the increase in lifespan. Uh, but this is probably one feature, and we are interested in identifying other common features. To understand that, we have to characterize many long-lived organisms. But in addition to, uh, to the common strategies, uh, it's apparent from these studies uh, of the naked mole rat and the brand's bat is that there are also species-specific or lineage-specific uh, strategies, which each animal has its own strategy. And so, and probably uh, extended lifespan would involve a combination of both, both common strategy and, uh, and species-specific. Uh, one challenge is to find um, uh, signatures in the genome which are responsible for long lifespan. I mean, genomes are very large, and uh, each species, they uh, evolve um, according to habitat, the diet, or environment, and predators, and so on. So, because there are many changes in the genome, it's not easy to find features uh, which are responsible for long lifespan and distinguish them from other uh, features. So, uh, therefore, one approach uh, to this problem is to study pairs of, of organisms which are closely related to each other, uh, but one of them would be long-lived, one short-lived. And so uh, for the naked mole rat, such pair would be the Maryland mole rat, which is uh, not really short-lived, but shorter-lived than uh, the naked mole rat, but it's a kind of normal animal. Same thing for the brand's bat. There are some uh, bats, like the evening bat, which lives only about 10 years or so, uh, but quite, quite similar in terms of phylogeny. So in, uh, with other organisms, like in some uh, primates as well, there are short, shorter-lived and longer-lived organisms. So by studying those pairs, we can, we can help to narrow down the genomic features which are responsible for long lifespan. <laughs>